Hello everyone, and welcome to the third Oxygen XML Editor related webinar we are hosting this fall. This webinar is dedicated to data publishing, publishing to modern online help and to PDF. My colleague Stephen Higgs, who is our main technical writer and the person in charge of documenting the entire set of Oxygen features and XML related technologies, We'll be showing you how to create publishing templates in order to ensure consistent web and PDF-based publishing using your custom fonts, colors, and skins. Uh, but before we begin, this webinar will be recorded. So uh, if you cannot attend it, you will find the recording online on our event page and uh, you know, in a couple of weeks, you'll have it on our Oxygen XML YouTube channel. I have a couple of colleagues here from our web help development team who will answer any questions you may have. Uh, so we have a questions panel in the go to webinar interface, which you can use to ask us questions. If we do not manage to answer a question, we will try to contact you after the webinar. Oh, you can also ask us questions on Twitter uh, and we, we may answer uh, either during the webinar or um, after the webinar. At the end of Stephen's presentations, we'll have a questions panel in which we'll discuss some of your ideas or uh, some of the things that you wanted to find out more about. Uh, so, hello, Stephen. Hello, Radu. Hello, uh, are you ready to start the presentation? Yes. I will make you the presenter and uh, good luck. Thank and you. Everybody enjoy. <laughs> hello, everyone. Thank you for attending. So in this webinar, I will be showing you details about the publishing templates feature used in Ditto Web Help and PDF Transformations, how to create your own templates, and some specific use cases for customizing various aspects of the output. The agenda for today, as an introduction, I'll explain what an Oxygen publishing template is, and I'll introduce you to the built-in templates. I'll discuss what is in a template package. I'll show you how to create your own custom template and we'll explore various use cases for customizing the output. So what is an Oxygen publishing template? It is used to define the layout and style for data-based web help or PDF output. It is defined using a self-contained customization package stored as a zip archive or folder that can easily be shared with others. And each template package contains a descriptor file, it has an OPT file extension, and various resources that define various aspects of the output. Now, of course, you can customize the output using various methods without using a template, but the possible benefits of using a publishing template package include, you can use any of the existing built-in templates as a starting point for customizations. The customized template packages are easily shared with others. Custom template packages remain intact even when you upgrade Oxygen to a new version. A template can be easily integrated into a continuous integration publishing system and the same template package can contain both a web help and PDF customization, and you can reuse some of the resources. So some of the customization methods include, you can add additional template resources to customize the output, such as logos, fav icons, CSS files. You can extend the default processing using XSLT extensions or HTML fragment extensions. You can use transformation parameters. For web help output, you can customize which components will be displayed and where they're positioned in the page. 
For PDF output, you can customize various aspects with simple CSS styling. And the customization possibilities are virtually limitless. And I'll be showing you some examples of some of these possibilities using some of these various methods. So now I'll introduce you to the built-in templates. Currently, there are three transformation scenarios that include the templates feature, the two DitaMap web help responsive transformations, and the DitaMap PDF transformation based on HTML5 and CSS. And note that in version 21, which will be released next spring, we will add the publishing templates feature to another PDF transformation. So now I'll go to Oxygen and I'll edit a web help responsive transformation to show you the built-in templates. So in this first templates tab, you see all the existing templates. And at the top, there are various tags that you can use to filter the templates. There are two primary layout types, tiles, tree, and various other tags, mostly color schemes. And you can add your own tags to make it easier to find your custom templates. And I'll show you how that's done in a few minutes. If I hover over a template, it'll show me more details, including the location of the descriptor file. And if I click on this icon in the bottom left, it'll show me an online preview of what the main page for that template will look like. So let's talk about the template package. So each publishing template is a package that contains a descriptor file and various resources. The descriptor file controls the template package by defining the references to other resources. And you can see that the web help templates contain a few more types of items, but many of them are the same or similar in both web help and PDF. So every package must have a descriptor file and at least one CSS file, but it, it can have more. And it, they can contain other resources, transformation parameters, XSLT extension points, web help templates can also include HTML fragment extensions. And you'll notice that I put this last one, HTML page layout files on its own and starred at the bottom. And that's because it requires kind of an additional explanation, which I will offer in a minute. Now I'll show you how to create a new custom template. And the easiest way to do so is using an existing template to use as a starting point. Now, just for your information, for this webinar, I've created a sample project about space exploration. And I've already included a bunch of resources that I'll use in my customizations. For example, in this IMG folder, I have all the images that are referenced in the individual topics, but I also have some custom images like this custom logo. I have a background image and various other images that I'll use in my customizations. So I'll get started by, again, editing a web help responsive transformation. And I'll choose an existing template. And I'll click on Save Template As. And this is how you create a new template starting from an existing one. At the top, you see that I can give it a name and a description. This next section just shows the parameters from the existing template that will be copied to the new template package. And there's this option down here, include HTML page layout files. And this is where I'll explain this concept. So in our user guide, 
there's a topic that explains the template package contents. This one's for the Web Help Responsive Customizations. And in this topic, there's a section for HTML page layout files. And basically, they define the default layout of the generated pages for each template. And there are four types of pages, the main page, the topic page, the search results page, and the index terms page. Now, before the introduction of the publishing templates feature, customizing these four HTML page layout files was the primary way of configuring the layout of the four types of pages for a particular template. Each of the page types have various components. that appear by default, and each component has a corresponding element. And if this element is included in the HTML file, that component will appear in the output. Now, our web help team has gone to great lengths to improve the default look of each built-in template, and they include the most common components in each of the four page types. and. They make each template look as nice as possible to begin with. And now that we have the publishing templates feature, there are better and easier methods for customizing the output. But you can still customize these HTML files. It's just not recommended because if you upgrade Oxygen to a newer version, those files may no longer produce the desired results. And if the web help team has added new components, in the meantime, you won't have access to them and therefore won't benefit from the upgrade. So I'm going to go ahead and create a, a test package, and I'll actually include them this time just to show you what the files look like and show you how they're referenced in the descriptor file. So I'll refresh my project, and you see that it created this zip file. If I open the zip file, you see that it copied this page templates folder. And here are the four HTML files. This first one is the main page. And you see that it contains various elements that are that define the components that will appear in that page type. And if I open the descriptor file, this is how those four pages are referenced in the descriptor file. So now I'm going to actually create a new package for real. And I'm going to choose a very basic existing template that has the style I want as a starting point. I'll give it a title. Script, the description is optional. And I won't include the layout files this time. And I'll save my package. Again, I'll refresh my project. And notice that every time it saves the template as, or it's packaged into a zip archive. And since I want to modify some of its files, I need to unzip it into my project folder. Okay, now this is a good time to explain the template descriptor file. The descriptor file contains elements that define the template package. And each descriptor file requires a name, at least one CSS file, and a web help and or PDF element. And then there's a variety of optional 
elements that can be included. If we go back to our user guide topic, you see that all of these possible elements are described here and it shows you how to define them in the descriptor file. So in my case, I'm going to open the descriptor file that was saved when I created the new template. And I'm going to make some small adjustments. For example, I want to use my own preview image. And notice that it supports content completion. And I'll make a small change to one of the tags. And I'm not going to include this online preview URL element because I didn't create one ahead of time. Okay, so I've made some small adjustments and now I'll save it, save it and I'll transform it just to see what it looks like as a starting point for my custom template. However, at this point, I can't see my template, and that's because I need to instruct Oxygen where to look for it. So in the bottom right-hand corner, there's this Configure Publishing Templates Gallery. And I just need to add my directory where I have my custom templates. And when I click OK, I see my template is the first one listed. And you also see the, the test one, and that's because it looks for descriptor files in either folders or zip files, zip archives. So I'll select my template and transform it just to see what it looks like as a starting point. Very simple, very basic. So now I'll start making some customizations. And probably the easiest way to customize the output is by using a custom CSS file to style various things. And I've already created one. And in my custom CSS, you see that I've imported some Google fonts and I've added some rules for fonts, colors, sizes and whatnot for things such as the publication title, the top menu, the tiles, and various other styling rules. So now I need to go back to the descriptor file and reference my custom CSS file. And notice I'm not going to replace the one that was saved with the package. I'm just going to add a, my new CSS file. And so it will be combined with the existing one. Now I'll save it and transform it again, and we'll see what it looks like now. And you can see that there's some small changes. So I have some custom images that I want to include. I have a, a logo file that I want to add before the publication title, and I have a background image that will surround this search input field. And if I go back to the user guide, this is in the template resources section, you'll see that for the logo, there's actually an element for it. So I just need to add the logo element, and that's also inside the resources element. And this is my logo. Now the background image is an additional graphic, and I'll reference that in my custom CSS file. Here's my rule for that. And by the way, I have this text file that 
I've already predefined a bunch of CSS rules that I'm copying and pasting from. This is just to save time so that you don't have to watch me inputting rules manually. And you'll see that this is my background image and I've added some styling. And now I need to instruct the transformation to copy the additional image to the output folder. Otherwise, it won't be available in the output. And if I go back to the user guide, this is done in a file set element. It says here that you can specify one or more sets of additional resources that will be copied to the output folder during the transformation process. It can be specified with the file set element and you can use one or more include or exclude elements. So it's like this. Again, this is inside the resources element. So I'll add a file set element. And in my case, I'm just gonna use the include element. I won't exclude anything at this point. And here's my background image. I'll save my descriptor file and transform it again, and we'll see what it looks like now. And you see that I have my logo, my background image. It's starting to look better. So now I want to show you some more types of customization using other methods and these were inspired by actual customer requests. Also, this is a good time to point out that we have a sample project on GitHub and here it is. It uh, includes some sample templates and customization examples. One of them is for generating the time in a custom footer and I'll actually try this example in my custom template. This particular customization is an example of an XSLT extension. So it requires this XSL file that has the code for it. And in my project, I've already added this file. And if I go back to that topic, you'll see that there is a section for XSLT extensions, and you'll see that it's defined a structure like this. So going back to that sample, I'm gonna open the descriptor file in this example, and I'm just gonna copy that whole XSLT element structure from there and paste it into my descriptor file. And there's also a required parameter. And it won't work without this parameter, so I'll also copy it. And I'll save it, and once again, transform it. And you see it generated the time in the footer. In this sample project, there's also an example for adding copyright information in a custom footer. And this one is done with HTML fragment extensions and or an extension and with a macro. If I go back to the user guide topic, you see that there's a section for the HTML fragment extensions. And there are 13 predefined placeholders. And these can be used for the custom HTML fragments. And you simply use the corresponding placeholder. It's a parameter value. And you reference the well, you can reference an XHTML file or fragment. And there's also a 
section for macros. And you see there's a variety of supported macros. This localization one is probably the most popular one. But in my case, I'm going to use this map XPath expression. If I go back to my project and open the data map, you'll see that I have some copyright information in the topic meta element, year and organization, basically. And in my project, I've already created an XML file for this. And you'll notice that in my XML file, I have the XHTML fragment and the macro. And here's my map XPath macro. Basically, it's going to insert the fragments. And then for the copyright information, it's going to extract the year from this path and the organization from this path. So back to the user guide. This is how it shows. This is how you reference HTML fragments. It's inside an HTML fragments element. And each one has a fragment element. And you'd reference the file and the placeholder. And in my case, it's going to be number 12. This is for the footer. So I'm going to use the corresponding value for that placeholder. And in my descriptor file, I will add an HTML fragments element. And for the file, I'll reference that footer.xml file. And for the placeholder, I'll paste the value that I just copied to the clipboard. Again, I'll save it and transform it. See how this looks. And it generated it. Now I want to style it to make it stand out a little more. And I'll show you how to use the Browser's Inspector tool to identify the selector used in the output. So I'll inspect this footer. And this particular element is already highlighted. And the class is copyright underscore info. So that's the selector that I need to add some rules for, which I already did ahead of time. So I'll just copy these rules. Basically, I'm just adjusting the font and font weight, whatnot. So on my custom CSS file, I'll add these rules. Again, I'll save it and transform it. And you see that it definitely stands out now. Now I'll show you another customization. And this is based on a very recent user request. In the home page of our user manuals, you notice that we have this stripe that has video tutorials embedded. And this particular user wanted to know how they could add such a thing in their output. And this can also be achieved with an HTML fragment. And again, I've already created an XML file for this. And in this case, I'm going to show you what I did to, to determine the content of this file. Because when I started, the XML file only had this namespace line. So back in the output, I'm going to inspect that stripe. And see, it's this element that's the entire stripe. 
So if I right click on that element, copy, copy element, then I just pasted it into my file. I'll actually paste it just so you can see that there actually is content and it's similar. I'll revert. So I pasted the content here and then I adjusted it according to my specific project. And I also created three new images. These act as thumbnails for the videos that will that you will see in that stripe. So back in my descriptor file, again, I will add a fragment element. In this case, it's this XML file. And I'll go back to the user guide to determine the placeholder. And in this case, you see that it's number 10 above the tiles. So it's going to be this value. And I'll paste that in my descriptor file. I'll save it. And ahead of time, I also identified some styling rules to make it look better. So I'll add those to my custom CSS. Save it. And we'll transform it again. And you'll see that I have a problem. It's not showing my images. That's because I have to, again, instruct the transformation to include those images in the output. So I need to include them. and transform it one more time. And it looks nice. Now another user very recently asked how they could reduce the size of the tiles because their particular output was for mobile devices. And I achieved this again by using the Browsers Inspector tool I'm inspecting the actual tile element. And I'm, I started looking in the associated CSS files. And I played around with it until I found that this width property adjusted it. There's uh, other various ways to do this as well, but this was a very simple way. So I just tested it until I found a percentage that I liked. And so I know that in this wh underscore tile class, I need to add this particular rule. Very simple CSS rule. And again, I'll save, transform it. and I achieved my results. And now remember that one of the benefits of the publishing templates is that they can contain both web help and PDF customizations, and you can reuse some of the resources. This was made possible by the introduction of a CSS-based processing engine that is built in for a type of transformation. So now I'll use the same template for PDF output. Now back in our user guide, there's also a topic for the template package contents for PDF customizations. Similar to the other one, describes the possible elements. In this case, you'll notice that it uses the PDF element and a lot of those elements inside it are very similar. 
So back in my descriptor file, I will add a PDF element. And I'm going to reuse some of the, the same resources, same elements. For example, the preview image file, I want to use the same one. I'll use most of the same tags. Not this first one, because in PDF you don't have tiles. And I'll use the same CSS files. But I've also created a custom CSS file that is specifically for print. And you'll see in this CSS file, I've used that same background image on the front page. I've used my same rocket logo, in this case, in the top left corner and top right corner of certain pages. And I've defined some other small rules that are specific for print or PDF. So now I need to add a reference to this custom CSS file. And again, I'm not replacing the existing ones. I'm adding another one so they'll all be combined. OK, so now I'll transform it using a PDF transformation. It's this one. And because my descriptor file has that PDF element, you see that my custom template is listed in this templates tab for this type of transformation. And I'll select it, transform it. And when it comes up, you'll, you'll note that many of the styles are the same in the PDF format as they were in web help, because I reused uh, some of the same CSS files, just added another one for specific print media, reused other things such as the logo and background Im image, fonts, colors, spacing, other things are very similar or the same. So now I'll add some more PDF customizations. And again, these are based upon specific use cases requested by users. For example, I have a table in this topic. And you'll notice that there's a problem. I have a fictitious name of an API, and it's too long, so it bleeds off the page. And this wasn't a problem in the web help output because the tables have the tables are responsive, but it is a problem in the PDF output. So this is a good time to point out that in the user guide there is a section called customization CSS. And this section contains a large amount of topics that explain how to achieve all sorts of specific PDF customizations. And our PDF output team is constantly adding more topics to this section. And there's one for hyphenation. That's what I need for my table. And you see that there's a procedure for how to enable or disable hyphenation for tables. And I've already set the XML lang attribute on my root map. so. I just need to add this simple rule in my custom CSS. And before I transform it, I'll show you one more. If I go to this topic, notice that I have a list and it has a page break after the first list item. And this is a very common request. Uh, users want to know how to avoid page breaks in certain elements. In my case, it's a list, specifically an unordered list, a UL element. 
if I go back to the user guide, there is a section for page breaks, how to avoid page breaks in lists and tables. And in my case, it's specifically this one, how to avoid it in a UL. So I'm going to copy this rule in my custom CSS. And I'll save it, transform it again. I have to hurry and close the reader application. And you'll see that the table or the list problem is now solved. And my table now has hyphenation. So that problem is solved as well. Now, if I go to the index, I see another problem. I don't like the fact that the page numbers for each of the index terms is rendered on a new line. Now, we do have a section in the user guide for customizing the index, but this very specific use case is not there, at least not at the moment. And so I'll show you how I achieved this. The first child topic in this section is called debugging the CSS. And it offers tips for solving output problems. And it explains that the transformation creates a merged map file, and it can be found in the output directory. And this merged map file can be used to troubleshoot output problems, such as what I just experienced. And this topic explains how you can open this merged map in Chrome and also in Oxygen. I'll open it in Oxygen. So I'll go to my output folder. And here's my merged map file. I'll open it. And the instructions said to go to the styles drop down and choose print ready. And just to show you. So the reason for this is it'll activate certain CSS selectors enclosed in an at media print rule. In my case, I didn't really need this, but I'm following the instructions. And then I scroll down to my index where I have the problem. I'm going to right click on one of the index terms and select inspect styles. This opens the CSS inspector in Oxygen. And to make it easier to identify the elements, I'm going to change it to full tags. So inside this element, I identify that the class is index slash formatted value. And the next one, if I go to the next element, is index slash ref ID. And then the link, the class is index slash link. So those are the three classes that I need to define a rule to display them in line. And note that I could also change this to full tags with attributes. And in this particular instance, I would have seen those classes in line rather than using the CSS inspector. But there's various ways to identify these classes that you need. So I've added these rules. Notice that I have my three classes that I just identified. I've chosen to display them in line. I've changed some color properties. And in my custom CSS, I'll add these rules. Save. Transform it again.
And if I go to the index, now it looks great. So these were just a few customization examples, but I hope that you can see that the possibilities are virtually limitless, and many of these were very simple. Now, if I was creating a template for my team, I could easily share the package with them. For example, in our case, we have our documentation project stored in a Git repository and we use GitHub to commit changes to our project. Here's our whole documentation project. And you notice that we have this publishing folder and publishing template folder. This is where we have all our publishing templates. And if I go to that publishing preferences page, you'll see that that folder is referenced and we have project options selected. And this means that if I add a custom template in that publishing folder, I just need to commit my changes to the project and then other team members simply need to pull the changes and they'll have access to the new template. And the last thing is here are the resources, the links that I showed you during the webinar. Of course, you probably already know where our user guide is. And here's the link to that sample on GitHub. So this concludes my part of the demonstration. Thank you for watching. And I'm going to send the controls back to Radu and uh, he'll hopefully have some you will announce some questions and answer them. Uh, thanks, Steven, for the informative presentation. So uh, indeed you demonstrated it's important to have a unified style used to render both the online and the PDF output. Also having the possibility to share template packages with others and use such a package on any machine is practical and makes a lot of sense. Also, also thanks for showing us your debugging process, your way of solving uh, a problem using uh, uh, the web inspector tools or, or the oxygen um, CSS inspector. Um, uh, now about the questions we received during, during the webinar. Uh, our, the first question was if the same uh, package file can be used both for P web help and PDF. And the answer is, uh, of course, yes. Um, if you have multiple CSSs defined in the template package, which one will, uh, will win? And the answer is that um, all those CSSs defined in the package will appear referenced in, in the published HTML documents. So the order of the CSS files will be the order in which they will ta be taken into account by the web browser, meaning usually that the, the last CSS in the, in the list uh, has more power to overwrite uh, various selectors. Um, another question is how many CSS files can be included in a template and there is no upper limit to that. You can include all your CSS files, you can link to them in, um, in the template. And um, uh, what can I say? This, this is a, an interesting possibility to customize your output and to share your customization with others. So if until now you have used the custom CSSs for web help or maybe custom style sheets uh, added as uh, separate plugins, you now have the chance to, to gather all your customizations in one, uh, in one uh, archive. Uh, also, if um, you are still using the data to PDF classic way, classic mechanism, uh, which uses XSLFO and is very hard to customize. Um, you need XSLT customizations. Again, this would be a good time to try our data to PDF using CSS customization approach. 
it's way easier to customize various aspects of the PDF customization. We have lots of documentation covering all aspects of PDF customization. So why why shouldn't you give it give it a try? Um, if you have additional questions, you can anytime drop us an email or you know, write us on Twitter. Um, so Stephen, if you don't have anything to add, I would like to show the the list of upcoming webinars. Sure. Uh, we have we still have lots of upcoming webinars this fall. We have a webinar about creating custom oxygen frameworks. So a framework is um, a mechanism which allows you to add custom validation, content completion, and visual editing support for any XML vocabulary. We have uh, a webinar about create, getting started with Schematron rules and Schematron quick fixes, creating your own validation rules on top of the default data validation. And lots of people started using Schematron to, to impose various constraints on their data project. We have uh, a simple data project set up. So how, how can you set up your data project? And uh, you know, it will show you some, some basic, uh, probably, data editing functionality. And uh, in December, we have a webinar about Oxygen XML Editor product, productivity tips and tricks various productivity enhancements, various actions and toolbars that you might not know of. I will try to go through each of them and uh, maybe I will give you some, some tips about uh, enhancing your, your fun when using oxygen and uh, decreasing your, your development time. Uh, we'll also be attending some um, conferences in person. So we have the Data Open Toolkit Day in Rotterdam on November 4th, uh, a day dedicated to, to data publishing using the Data Open Toolkit uh, uh, open source software, a day sponsored by, by Oxygen. Uh, data Europe will be attending Data Europe uh, in Rotterdam on November 5th. We have uh, again two presentations there. And uh, five or six of us will attend TC World, which takes takes place at Stuttgart in Germany uh, on November 13th. So if you want to meet us in person to ask us various questions or, or to attend the, any of our live presentations, will be will be there in the, in the month to come. Uh, one question I see coming up uh, is, is the PDF transformation template based on what was the Alchemy project? Um, we have our own uh, PDF engine called Chemistry, which um, takes, the, uh, takes XML and CSS and pro produces uh, PDF. So it's not... Uh, Ah, oh, so you meant chemistry. Okay, so uh, yeah, so it's based on our chemistry processor. A processor which can be is freely to can be freely used from um, from inside oxygen. Anything else that you want to mention, Stephen? No. So uh, thanks for participating. Again, just ask us anything on. Uh, our technical support email address and we'll be happy to help you with setting up maybe your first template, your first package and uh, get you started on, on this uh, new way of customizing uh, web help. And thanks Stephen for, for presenting everything. Sure, and uh, the slides and that sample project will also be available from that events page in a few days, uh, along with the recording. So I suppose if somebody wants to play around with this sample that I created, they can do so. Uh, all right, everybody, thanks for attending. And uh, I'm not sure if uh, it's good night or <laughs> good afternoon or 
good morning for you but uh, anyway uh, we'll uh, we'll meet via email and uh, maybe you'll uh, join us for our next webinars uh, goodbye